Hello, Kipsters. Today is March 2nd, and we are moving on in our work with the Brass family. Yesterday, we learned about the trumpets and the cornets, and today we will be moving on to personally my favorite instrument, and of course, one of the most very popular brass instruments we have, the trombone. Um, I wanted to reiterate one more time, just in case some of us didn't watch yesterday's video, how these lessons are going to be working. If you are following along with the links provided in Google Classroom, you should easily find that there is a link that will directly take you to the Nearpod that you need. But if you are um, like others who just prefer to input the code, the code is also provided in the description and you can easily just type in the code to this Nearpod in the Nearpod website, P9FNE, I believe it is. Let me double check, FNE, yep. And then once you get to that, you will be right where we are, hopefully. And if you need to just fast forward to the slide that says March 2nd, please feel free to do that so that you can be on the correct day. It'll start you on March 1st, but today um, we will be starting on March 2nd. So if you click a little bit further ahead, it might ask you a couple things to finish, blah, 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 blah. And then it'll take you to the day that says March 2nd, okay? Starting here is where we will continue on with this lesson. And again, you just watch the YouTube video while you are participating in the Nearpod. When I say next on the slide, then you move on next on your own Nearpod slide so that when we get to the section that answers a question, we can answer it together um, correctly, okay? So back to March 2nd slide, we're going to start now. So if you wanna go ahead and click forward on the slide, we are on this instrument, the French horn, okay? Now, this is the instrument that is my favorite. I did not play this instrument in, in any type of capacity. I've tried it out a couple times. Um, and I didn't play it mainly because it's, you know, I, my mom played clarinet, so I wanted to kind of be like her when I was when I was choosing what instrument I wanted to play. But I didn't, I didn't even really like this instrument that much until I heard it, of course. So sometimes you don't know that you like an instrument until you hear it, but this is my favorite sounding instrument. I love when I hear it in songs, and you may have heard it a couple times in your own music that you like, but it is it is a very distinguished sound, and, and we'll talk about it here in a bit. So the French horn. The horn has long been part of European European hunting lifestyle. So as we talked about earlier, the trumpet was used to kind of like maybe scare animals out of hiding or let the soldiers know that now was the time to attack. Okay, and the French horn was also involved in that. Horns were used for royal hunts, playing fanfares and horn calls. By the mid 1600s, there were two types of horns, a straight horn and a curved horn, which was coiled to fit over the arm of the player. The horn is a unique part of the brass family because it uses the left hand to play the keys and is played with the bell facing backwards. It has the largest range of the brass instruments and is one of the most expressive instruments. So this is also why I love it. It is very expressive. It, it has a warm tone to it. It almost feels like you're a king when you're listening to it or, or that a king is approaching when you hear that sound. Um, and this says that it has the largest range of the brass instruments. So that doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean that it plays higher notes than the trumpet. As I was telling you yesterday, the trumpet is the highest playing brass instrument in terms of how the notes it can get. But it does mean that it can play really high, but it can also play really, really low. OK, so that means that it has the, the ability to play both high notes and low notes, not the lowest possible note, not the highest possible note but it does have the ability to kind of stretch its, its range both ways. So really cool about that instrument as well. Um, and it also is different because like you said here that the bell is faced backwards. So when you're holding it, a, a French horn, you're kind of like playing it like this and the bell is behind you. So the sound isn't, is, doesn't go out as easily as other instruments. You know how you're playing a trumpet and the bell is literally facing the audience that you're playing to. When you're playing a French, French horn, the bell is not facing it the audience. So sometimes you can maybe twist your body and make it louder. Um, but it, it's it's the one instrument that doesn't do that entirely. And you also, you, you put your hand in the big bell there. So it's one of the only instruments that you, the, the only brass instruments that you put your hand inside of, and that helps 
how the instrument sounds itself. So the French horn is a very unique instrument and very recognizable. When you see that instrument right there, you know that's not a trumpet, right? You know that's not a trombone. You know that's not a tuba. You're like, oh, that's a French horn because it's so easy to recognize with the sim with the circular shape and the curve of all the tubes in it. Moving on to the next slide, we're going to watch a video here about how the French horn is made. Um, and again, you can just watch this video with me on this Nearpod, or you can pause the YouTube, sorry, on YouTube, or you can pause the YouTube video and watch the video on your own time. I'm going to go ahead and press play now. The French horn has a four octave range and a distinctive mellow sound. As with other brass instruments, the musician plays certain valve combinations and alters lip tension to produce the right notes. However, on a French horn, the mouthpiece is relatively small, making this instrument one of the most challenging to play. The French horn is made up of nearly four meters of coiled tubing, a set of valves, and a flared bell. To make the tail end, they shape a sheet of brass around a steel mandrel then braise the edges together to form a tube. With a burnishing tool, an artisan rounds out the shape. Next, they lubricate a brass disc as it spins on a lathe. Using a variety of tools, they shape it into a bell. This plasma weld machine fuses the bell and tail together. Back on the lathe, they trim the diameter of the bell. Then roll the edge into a rim called a bead. This reinforces the bell. Next, they fill the bell with a hot, tar-like liquid called pitch. Once the pitch cools, they put the tail into a forming block and carefully bend it. The hardened pitch provides support, preventing the tail from collapsing. They verify the bend against a template. Using the same technique, they shape the pieces that form the horn's tubing. Of all the brass instruments, the French horn has the most complex bends. These valve knuckles connect the tubes to the cases that'll house the valves. Some French horns have three valves. This double French horn has four. Each valve case goes onto this alignment device, which pushes in the knuckles to the correct depth. After brazing the knuckles to the cases, they hollow out the case interiors with a cutter. Then they solder the valve cases to each other with connecting rings. They insert the tubing parts into the valve knuckles. These curved tubes are the horn's slides. The musician tunes the instrument by adjusting them in and out of the straight tubes. After soldering the straight tubes to the knuckles, they remove the slides for now to make other areas accessible. Then they solder this partially assembled valve section to the tail and bell. Now they apply buffing compound and polish the horn's interior surfaces. They polish the more accessible surfaces with a cloth buffing wheel. Then they wash off the compound and coat the entire surface in a protective lacquer. Now final assembly of the valve section can begin. They install rotors in the valve cases and levers to activate them. Unlike piston valves on a trumpet that move up and down, these valves rotate to direct airflow through specific tubing combinations. 
a lever connects to each valve via a rod and nylon cord. With the valve section now complete, they reinstall the slides, then do a final wipe down to remove grease residue and fingerprints. This pristine finish complements the superb sound quality. Awesome. If you're finished with the video, we're going to be moving on in the Nearpod, and that is how a French horn is made. Quiz for you guys. What instrument has the most bends in it? Which instrument has the most bends in it? We have the French horn at the top of you there, you see the trumpet, cornet as well, and then I put the piano in there. Um, just to just to kind of give you guys a little bit more of a hint as to what the correct answer is. But yes, of course, it is the French horn, the instrument we have been learning about. Okay, so go ahead and submit that answer and then we will move on. We were unable to submit my answer. That's all right, we're gonna move on anyway. Let me refresh my near pod here. And sometimes this happens when we're watching these near pods at the same time. But um, if you did already, if you're still on the page, yours probably isn't messed up. Just go ahead and click French horn for the instrument that has the most bend in it. And then we will move on from there. All right. I'm going to retry this instrument with the most bend French horn submit. And then you, of course, would have got it correct. Okay, here is a video of someone playing the French horn, covering it with a song. You guys can watch this on your own as well, or watch it on my YouTube video along with me. Good. And if you want, you can continue on watching that video on your own, or you can just move on with me. But as of now, we are moving on in the near pod. Um, if you are just now following along, you can go ahead and um, click next to be with us. So we are moving on to the next instrument, the trombone. Now, the trombone is a very recognizable instrument, much like the French horn. Very easy for you to see. One cool thing about the trombone that's different than the other instruments, it doesn't have any buttons, right? Um, all the other instruments, they had at least three buttons you could press. Sometimes they have four. But the trombone doesn't have any buttons you press. So instead, what you do is you move the slide. You see that big slide, the big, long um slide looking type thing there you move the slide to different position it has six total positions from beginning to end and each position plays a different note and so you have it's actually like it's very intricate but what you have to do to get different notes because you don't have any buttons to change the sounds 
you have to move your lips a lot to make different notes. So it's like a very intricate buzzing sound that you make. You need to like move your lips a lot to make it sound different. I'm not a brass player. I'm a woodwind player, so I'm not too great at it. But yes, the trombone is very recognizable, much because it doesn't have buttons like the other instruments, the other brass family instruments do. But still brass nonetheless. The word trombone derives from the Italian tromba, trumpet, and one, a suffix meaning large. So it, it, it derives from a word that basically means large trumpet. Okay. Nearly all trombones have a telescoping slide that varies the length of the instrument to change the pitch. So right now, you, if you're looking at that picture, that trombone is in first, maybe second position. But first position is literally just at the beginning. All right. And then second position, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. And it's very, very minor sometimes the difference between second and third and fourth and fifth. So you have to practice quite a bit to get to get used to how your arm feels in the different places for it, if you were to ever choose to play trombone. Many modern trombone models also have a rotary valve that can also change the pitch of the instrument. So some of the newer trombones do have little triggers on them. They have little buttons that have been invented now to make the trombone more playable. Um, but you'll see some trombones are a little bit, they have a little bit more, a little bit more, um, wire or not wire pipe in them more brass on them and more curled so you can see um you can you can play different notes play lower play higher sometimes um, but this instrument right here this trombone in the picture is a very very simple version of the trombone moving on to a video of how the trombone is made our, our trombone isn't really much different from its medieval predecessor known as the sack butt, with its distinctive s shape hand slide and bell section. It's a blast from the past and a pretty loud one, but it can also sound smooth and mellow. The trombone literally slides down to the low notes. It's the only instrument with a hand slide to lengthen it in order to change pitch. To make a trombone, they cut sheet brass in the pattern of a bell stem. They shape it by wrapping it around a steel rod. Using a nylon-headed mallet, the worker hammers the brass to shape it further. It takes just a few minutes for him to hammer out a rough bell stem form. He spreads open the stem slightly, so he can make small notches on one edge with snippers. Then, with a brass-headed hammer, he taps down the notches so they hold the edges together. With an acetylene torch, he joins the notch seam melting in a brass alloy wire to bond it securely. But the seam overlaps and it's too thick. So he runs it through a seam roller. Two tons of pressure thins it, but now the bell stem is too flat. To round it out, he shoves it onto a bell-shaped rod and hammers it back into shape. Then he irons out the hammer marks with rollers. The bell stem, fitting loosely on a steel mandrel, goes through a draw bench. A hydraulic cylinder pushes it through a thick lead washer, pressing it tightly around the mandrel to its shape. To make the bell flare to attach to the stem, he puts a brass disc on a spinning lathe. Using pliers, he turns the edges of the disc to prevent it from flapping while spinning. With a lever, he manipulates a scissor spinning tool, pressing it against the turning brass disc. This shapes the disc into a flare. Making a trombone flare is a delicate business and is the work of a skilled craftsman. Getting it right is critical because the shape will affect the tone of the trombone. Next, with a torch, he braces the flare to the bell stem. The bell stem and flare now turn on a mandrel, while he presses against the seam with a wooden tool. This flattens the seam and gives the bell its final shape. Now it's time to make the tubing. A hydraulic cylinder pulls it on a mandrel through a die, stretching it considerably. In this way, both the diameter and thickness of the tubing are precisely controlled. Then they become ice tubes after they're filled with water and put in the freezer. 
The ice will keep the thin tubing from buckling in the next process. With a lever, he bends the tube around a U-shaped lock. As he works it into a U-shape, the tubing hardens. After the ice melts, he places the U-bend in a balling out die. He lubricates the tubing with oil and places a steel ball at the top of the tube and presses it down. He drops in smaller balls and they push the first larger ball through the U-tube. This stretches the inside of the tube, rounding it to the correct diameter. And then the balls exit at the other end. Now he pieces the tubes together and solders them the same way a plumber joins copper tubing. He adds a loop for the valve section. In total, a brass trombone has nine feet of tubing. Straightened, that's enough to reach from the floor to the ceiling. But of course, trombone makers are more interested in musical highs and lows. Finally, he solders a brace into place to add structural strength to one of the loops. A diamond tip tool engraves the company logo onto the trombone's bell stem. And a cloth buffing wheel spins against the trombone flare to polish it. This custom trombone has been built in approximately 50 hours, something worth blowing a horn about. And so if you can look in that video, we're moving on to the Nearpod here soon. This trombone has a lot more valves in it than the other one did, and a lot more bends and a lot more, um, a lot more buttons and triggers than the other one did. And they're both trombones. They both have the same capacity to play different notes when you play them, but some of them have a more warm sound or a brighter sound because it has less sound it has less pipes to travel through before it gets to the end okay so all these different trombones they all have a very similar function but how they're made and how many pipes it takes to make them um, really changes the sound and tone of each of these brass instruments moving on there is another video we are going to watch this is a video of this artist his name is trombone shorty and he's been playing trombone for a very long time since he was a little shorty um so this is a video of him singing and playing some trombone and i'll skip past a couple sections here as well too <laughs> And you'll see how he plays and you'll see how he moves it and that's how it makes different sounds. Watch. As you can see there, very, very cool stuff you can do with the trombone without even having buttons on it. Um, it. It's a lot of lip work. You saw how his cheeks were puffed up sometimes there towards the end. It takes a lot of effort to be a great trombone player. But this guy, I've, I've actually seen this guy in concert. Um, very, very talented trombone player. And there are many quite like him who can do the exact same thing. We're going to wrap this video up, guys, and go on to our... Um, our last slide here, we're going to do a quick matching, match the instrument with its correct name and picture. Okay, so take a few minutes here to do this on your own if you want, and in a couple seconds, I will give you the correct picture response.
We have some couple of instruments from yesterday here. Remember um, how we had the trumpets and the cornets, and what were those main differences there? Which one had more bends in it? Which one was shorter? Which one was longer? Which one had the highest notes? Which one could play the lowest and the high, well, could play a lot of low notes and a lot of high notes? I'm going to start with the one that we just learned about. So here I'm going to click this picture and match it with the word trombone. We just saw a trombone shorty playing his trombone, and that is what that instrument is. And I'm going to go ahead and do the other one we learned today as well. Remember I said that this instrument was very recognizable because of its rounded circular shape. So I'm going to go ahead and put this picture with the French horn. Now our two trickier ones are the cornets and the trumpet. Okay. Yesterday we talked about the trumpet and how it was the highest playing instrument and the most recognizable. And also it was the longest. Okay. It had a longer look to it. It also had a straighter a straighter pipe so it didn't get gradually longer or bigger as it went on as you can see this one kind of does okay so i'm going to go ahead and click this one and i'm, I'm going to say this is trumpet okay because it has the longer look the skinnier tubes and the less bends in the pipes and then of course the last one will be cornets hopefully you got all this right continue on this is the end of the lesson thank you guys so much as always you were kind you are smart you are important I look forward to the day that I see you guys again. And until then, have an awesome day.